Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Car Question. It's in 1995 that we saw the first Subaru Outback. Do you remember its ambassador? This Subaru Outback is pretty impressive. Not wrong there. It gets better gas mileage than a Cherokee, holds a turn tighter than a Blazer. Don't forget acceloration. Acceleration? That's right. It goes zero to 60 faster than an Explorer. Competition must be worried. Oh yeah. Scared it was Crocodile so Dundee, right. Paul Hogan. You know that Australian guy, which like Adventure and like Austin Terrence, well the Outback didn't lose at all. It's adventure side of it. And we're gonna taste the new version today. A completely new platform. The exterior looks like the previous version. It's strange, I feel that I repeat myself with the Subaru Legacy test that we did where we talk about the exact same point. It's a common point among the Subaru lineup. But a completely different road handling, more capacity with XMO 2.0, which is going to be available in the Onyx or outdoor version, depending where you live. But today we are in Yukon. We're going to find some gold and some adventure with that new Outback. Let's look at the exterior design of that Subaru Outback and I really love the comparison that Subaru told us. It's looking like an adventure boot. Well, you might say yes, because you can see it has the high ground clearance that we like, 8.7 inches. And by the way, look at the design also, it's really rugged and that's the Outback style with all the plastic on the side, that real big plastic addition to the front. And this is the go anywhere type that we like of Subaru. And by the way, you have to be ready for adventure, bad weather, anytime. That's why we're still gonna film, even if it's raining out there. Okay, let's get back to the style. Even if you choose the base version or the fully equipped model, it's gonna look mostly the same, except for one difference. If you're in the US, you've got the Onyx version, or here in Canada, the outdoor version. You're gonna see mostly black appearance package, but there's gonna be a major difference in inside with the seat and all the carpet where they are going to be protected from those nasty stains and the mud that we're going to get inside as soon as this video is over. <laughs> but with the base version, you've got the steelies, the wheel, 17 inches, you're still going to roll those Yokohama tires that are going to be okay in mostly all activities, but they are not real aggressive when it comes to off-road. Also, the headlights in all versions, all models, you're gonna find some LED, some fog light also. When you get to the side, 8, 17 inches or 18 inches of wheel, you can see once again the mansion all back on the style, it's really rugged. But once you're gonna get into your adventure, often you want to bring your bikes, you want to bring some more luggage, and you're gonna get those big roof carriers. And I really love what they did to those roof rails, real easy to open. You just pull them out and put them into position, and you You've got much more places to attach everything securely. Let's get to the rear section. One big difference now is that you don't see the exhaust system. With the Legacy, if you had the turbo engine, you can see those dual exhaust pipe. But with the rugged style of the Outback, they've hidden it, so you won't hit them if you're going off-road. When it comes to opening the trunk, the competition got some real unique way. Sometimes you need to kick, sometimes you need to get close to the car, sometimes it will open just when you're gonna pass right there in the back. But with the new Outback, you just take your hand and put it right there with the logo and that trunk will open real quickly. And it's real easy to put the stuff inside and the cargo capacity is real amazing. And that trunk is really quick. I really love the rugged look of that Outback, even if it's a little bit conservative.
As soon as you open the door of the Outback, you will be in known territory if you saw the legacy review that we did. Once again, the quality of the material has been improved. The comfort, the sound inside the car are all features that you're going to like. And if you're tall, just like me, the Outback's going to be even better because you will have ample space for you in front, in the rear, wherever you are in the car. And I really like it. Well, the screen, same thing as the Legacy. If you go with the base version, two dual 7 inches screen, you will have the possibility to go with that 11.6 inches screen that I really like. But the more and more I've used it, the more and more I find it to be less intuitive than it used to be. Because just to go right there at the temperature of your seat, you need to press more than one times. So usually you have a simple button right there in the console. So this is more complicated than it used to be. And often just changing the temperature, yes, you can use the button on the side, but sometimes the response, the fluidity of it, I cannot wait to see what will happen when you're going to get a really cold temperature outside. You know, that kind of temperature that you find in Quebec only. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are based in that car. You will also find that Apple CarPlay has been redesigned if you install the latest iOS on your iPhone. And it's going to use only a simple fraction of the screen. So I think they should have turned the screen on the side to make it bigger to have that nice resolution that you're usually going to find on a iPad. You've got USB connector in front of the car, in the rear of the car also. And when we are talking about ample space, with the seats up, it's 920 liters of space. If you pull them down, this is going to get huge, 2,144 liters. So it's real easy also to lower the seat and access the cargo. If you look at the materials that we have inside that Onyx or outdoor version, of the Outback. I think I like that even better than the Napa leathers that you can get, which is going to add some addition of orange inside your car. It's not real leather, but it's kind of leatherette in some kind of way. You've got the rubber mats in the car everywhere, even in the trunk. And that's a good thing today with the outdoor version, because there is a lot of sand in the car. You probably saw what we did with it. So all that nasty stuff is getting inside, but it's going to be real easy to clean. Sound system, four speakers, six speakers or 12 speakers with the Harman Kardon 576 watts of power. It's kind of okay, but a little bit of fine tune. Well, the same comment as I did in the Legacy. You've got no wireless charger. You can have it dealer install, but why not have it include right there in the center console? That would have been much better. You've got a front view camera also, and if you're looking for the X mode button, it's right there in the central screen. Otherwise, a real awesome car. The interior got even better with the real quality inside and it really shows. Let's talk about the mechanical components and the road handling of that new Outback and I feel that I'm going to repeat myself because this is nearly a copy and paste of the Subaru Legacy except for the X mode that you're going to find inside that car. So gone is the 3.6 liter engine. You've got two engine choice, which is the 2.5 liter non-turbo and the famous return of the 2.4 turbo, the XT version of the Outback. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you go for the 2.5, I think it's just barely enough force power to make the car enjoyable. But the real deal with that Outback is the return of the turbo engine. And this one will give you way better acceleration when it's going to be time to pass, when it's going to be time to tow, or when you're going to play in the desert, just like we did. So the 2.4 is going to be good for 260 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque, and all that torque is coming at a real low 2000 RPM, so it really likes to accelerate. And there's not much difference between the Legacy and the Outback when you look at the acceleration number. You've got the same CVT transmission mated to those boat engine. This one's going to simulate eight speed. You know, a lot of you guys talk to me about 
the torque power when you get off-road we tried it and this one seems to deliver the little kick that we needed to make sure that we went way over the obstacle that we were facing still it could be improved with a real low setting in some kind of way just like the other of the competitions do but it's going to be enough for all the Subaru buyers out there regular fuel is going to be used in both of those engine and you don't get any sports mode button eco mode button they simply put a next mode in that outback and if you go with the onyx version or the outdoor one you're going to be able to access to x mode 2.0 this one's going to be much better when it's going to come to deep snow deep mud deep sand where it's going to turn off the traction control and you're going to be able to keep that momentum and that's what we like so if you're facing a big hill and momentum is not important for you you use the first mode it's going to maximize traction by breaking the wheels that slip and you're going to be able to climb but otherwise in the playground that we have in in the one that we have tested x mode 2.0 is the better setting and it's going to be much more enjoyment as soon as you get to that big top of the hill at full speed and with that turbo power it was impressive to see that this car still accelerated while going up the guys with the 2.5 didn't have so much fun as we did, but believe me, they were able to get to the top also. The wing capacity is 2,700 pounds with the 2.5, and if you use the 2.4, 3,500 pounds. This is literally SUV territory. Fuel consumption with the 2.5 is going to be 9 liter in the city, 7.1 on the highway, 2.4 liter, 10.1 and 7.9. But believe me, you will get way over those numbers if you're going to be in winter with winter tires or just because it's more sportier. So you will probably press a little bit more on the accelerator. Suspension is kind of great on the outback. Remember, you've got that high ground clearance still you don't get that movement that bounciness that we used to find in the previous version you're still going to get some nose up and nose down movement and in the cornering you won't really feel it because the car is much more stiffer than it used to do braking is okay direction is okay but i really like how soft this car can be in regular city driving or even when you're going to get off-road and talking about off-road let's go do more tests with the x mode and a little off-road course that subaru designed for us We just had an amazing time here at the off-road course. You saw the X mode in action. Remember guys, this is not just to go up an incline to get a better traction. X mode is also a hill descent system. And if you want to slow the car down, just press a little bit on the brakes and you will be able to maintain traction. There's nothing worse that can happen. If you lose traction to a wheels on a wet grass surface, you're gonna see that it's gonna slide down pretty quickly. But with the X mode, you've got confidence and you're still gonna be able to steer the car down that hill to move around in obstacles. So I really like that system. Otherwise, let's talk about security also. It's not just about all off-road. On the road, you've got the famous eyesight system. You've got the driver focus. You've got the tons of security feature depending on the model that you're gonna choose. But beware, if you leave all them on, you're gonna have a lot of alerts and that might get noisy or annoying over time. But still, it's all about your security. Let's talk about price. If we go with a base, a Subaru Outback, $32,000 Canadian for the US, $26,000. It's not bad when you look at the equipment and what you get with that base car if you want to go with the onyx or the outdoor edition this is probably one of my favorite it's going to be over forty thousand dollar canadian the onyx edition or the outdoor edition is not available with the 2.5 and if you want to go with the fully equipped premier xt version 
$45,000 and more Canadian. So the minus points about this Subaru Outback, well, the XD engine will probably be a gas guzzler during the cold winter with your winter tires. So the fuel consumption is a little bit higher than expected. The styling is a little bit conservative though. Well, look at Subaru design, all their prototype. This was awesome. The look was real aggressive. But when they get into production, they tend to be light on the pen. Otherwise, I really miss also my good old limited slip differential in my 2.5 RS 2001. You know, back in the days when all was mechanical and not all about electronic, I kind of miss those days. But on the plus side, I like to have an optional turbo engine to give you more power. The X mode is pretty capable when you're going to get off-road with that car. The space inside is literally huge. It's going to be real comfortable for you and your passenger. And this is the perfect car to go on that adventure so what do you think about that feel free to comment in the section down there below do a thumbs up because you like that video and subscribe to car question because we will do more subaru testing for you guys take care